What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 29 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to set and define rivals, and make it so that way the rivals team changes based on the starter Pokemon that you've chosen at the beginning of the game. We're also going to look at how to change our rival's name, and make it so that way that name change is consistent across all rivals that you battle in the future. With that said, let's get into it. So I've created a good little example here on this starter island. But, um, in order to get a better idea of how it all goes down, we need to go and look at our professor's lab from earlier, and look at our starter Pokémon, because this is where it sets the very critical variable, starter choice. So when you choose the first starter, starter choice is set to 1, when you choose the second starter, starter choice is set to 2, and when it's the third, it's set to 3. So this is extremely important when moving forward with how we set our rival because we set this one variable, starter choice. So what we should do is go back to that island and start doing some conditional branches based on the starter choice. So let's just do a quick little setup. Let's do a conditional branch where if the variable starter choice is equal to one, then we've chosen the first starter. And then we can copy this. Else, if it's equal to two, then we've chosen the second starter. What we could do is say else if it's equal to three, then we've chosen the third, but really think about it like this. If it's not one and it's not two, then it's gotta be three. So what we should do is if it's equal to the first, or if starter choice is equal to one, then we do our first rival battle. If it's equal to two, we do our second rival battle. Else, we do our third rival battle because there's really only three possibilities. So. Now I need to get into the real meat of this video. The most important part is defining multiple rivals and having the rival have multiple teams. So what you want to do is go into your trainers.txt, and there already is a good example here that's been created. If you scroll down to rival1 in your trainers.txt, you'll see that there's rival1, blue, and I've tweaked it a little bit so he only has one Pokemon. Um, in the default version of Essentials, he will have three Pokemon but um, he either has a Bulbasaur, a Charmander, or a Squirtle. So let's make it so if starter choice is equal to one, he has a Bulbasaur. If it's equal to two, then he has a Charmander. And if it's equal to three, then he has a Squirtle. So one thing that you'll notice here that is being done that none of the other trainers have is after the name, there is comma and then a number. If there is no number, that's basically saying comma zero and then comma one, comma two. So really, this is the default form. This is form one, and this is form two. And the reason these numbers are important is because when you define a trainer, at the very end of this conditional branch logic, you, the PB trainer battle, you scroll to the very end, oftentimes you'll see false, comma, zero. You can change the zero to be a one, or a two, or a three, or whatever you want, and that will, train, that will change the version of the trainer you are fighting. So if we make this zero, then we will be fighting this version of blue right here, the one with the Bulbasaur. If we make this one, we'll fight blue with the Charmander. And if we make this two, we'll fight blue with a Squirtle. So let's go do this right now. So what we have right here is just the basic trainer battle logic. I'll paste it here. So if our starter choice is one, then we'll fight blue zero. Else, if starter choice is two, paste it in again, and then edit it. So we fight blue one, and then copy it and paste it in again. So that way we fight blue two, and I can get rid of this first one right here. So let me let me do a summary here also, just in case it was confusing. Um, so what's going on right here is it does a conditional branch check where if our starter choice is equal to one, then we fight the default version of blue, which is this blue right here. If our starter choice is equal to two, then we fight this form of blue right here. The reason we're fighting this form of blue with the comma one is because at the end of the conditional, we set this value to one. And then... Otherwise, so if it's not if it's not equal to one and it's not equal to two, then it must be three, right? So else we fight 
the final form where this value is set to 2, and if this value is 2, we are battling him with a Squirtle. So cool. We can actually go in and test this right now. Um, yeah, let's just test it. So what I've done also is I've created a couple NPCs. You can see the three of them right there at the different colors. One of them sets the value to 1, one of them sets the value to 2, and the last one sets the value to 3. So if the value is 1, when I talk to him, he should have a Bulbasaur. So let's test this out. Look at that snazzy intro animation, by the way. Pretty nice. Okay. So, if my calculations are correct, he should throw out a Bulbasaur. Nice. So let's leave this battle, and then set that variable to something else. Ah oh, man, I, I gotta close and relaunch. I don't know why it's doing that sometimes. I need to figure out why sometimes I call my Pokemon, and sometimes I just default run from the battle. Anyway, it's good. Let's set, let's set that variable now to 2. So if the variable is 2, then we are fighting the second form of Gary or Blue, which has a Charmander. So in this battle, he'll throw out a Charmander, since at the end of his conditional, we set that value to 1. Cool! Perfect. So there's our Charmander. Let's close this, and let's try out our third and final battle, which should be fine. So one point I'd like to make is you're not limited to just doing 0, 1, and 2. You could do 3, 4, 5, 6, so that way you can make it so that way your rival has the same trainer sprite and is consistent, but his, ta his team keeps growing as you grow. So right now we're doing a conditional where we're fighting 0, 1, and 2. But if you want... Eh, cool, there's the Squirtle. If you want... Let me close this now. If you want, you could do another one of these where you copy this. And then make it so that way 3, 4, and 5 are higher level. So, like, this could be a Squirtle at level, you know, whatever. It could be a Blastoise. At level 38. So, if we make it so that way 0, 1, and 2 are Bulbasaur, uh, Charmander, and Squirtle, you can make it so that way 3, 4, and 5 are Venusaur, and Charizard, and Blastoise. So, you can, you can do this as many times as you want. You could do three, four, and five, and then, you know, six, seven, and eight. You could you could just keep doing that infinitely. So you can make as many variations of a single trainer as you want, which is very nice. So this 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 rule doesn't only apply to rivals, by the way. If you wanted to make it so that way, this guy right here, whatever, Fisherman Patrick, you can make it so that way he has a form one and a form two where he gets stronger each time. And in order to access those forms, once again, you just type in a different number at the end of the conditional branch. Which is pretty awesome. Cool. So that is an easy way to make it so that way your rival's team is different based on the starter you have chosen. It's linked to a variable that you set when you choose your starter, and then you just use conditional branches to fight different versions of your same trainer, which is great. So the next thing I want to talk about is renaming your rival. This is a little event right here. What I've done is I've actually gone to the default Route 3 that came with the base version of Essentials. There was an event right here that does a lot of rival logic. And one thing that they do is they use a function here called pbset, which sets the value of a variable to something else. So what it does is it takes the number of that variable and then the value you are setting it to. So what they do here is they make it so that way the value you're setting it to is another function call where you type in something. So it sets the value of variable 12 to a name that you type in. And then if you go into your scripts, you can actually see here, like around the halfway point on the settings script, there's a thing called rival names, where this is the trainer type, and then this is the variable associated with their name. So 12 again, 12 is the variable that will be overriding that trainer's name. So if we fight a trainer of type rival one, which we are doing because our, our, our Gary battles from before are of type Rival 1. If you fight a trainer of type Rival 1, his name will be replaced by the value in variable 12. And you are setting the value of variable 12 right here with this function. So let's test that out, and let's rename our Rival. 
when I was younger, I always name always I would always name him stuff like you know poop butt, shit, piss. You know, very unoriginal, unfunny stuff. I think just in order to make it simple, I'll name him like Bob. In this, although it would be funny to do like a super immature name, but yeah, let's 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 interact with this one right here, which is the has the function call. Is defined and yeah. So if you don't name him, he uses the default name that you did enter in your trainers.txt. But if you do rename him, let's name him. Uh, actually, I like Doof. That's a good name. Cool. My name is Doof, huh? Okay then. Cool. So now if we battle him, his name will be Doof. There you go. I'm now fighting Doof because he's of type Rival 1. And we've made it so that way all Rival 1s use the variable set in 12. In variable 12. So yeah, now that's how you rename your rival. So that's pretty cool. So now every time you fight this trainer, because he's of type Rival 1, he will be named Doof. So you can, you can call this anytime you want. You can call this function at the beginning of the game, like, oh, what was my grandson's name again? Yeah. And uh, one other thing, one small other last thing. At the end there, he said his name because it used this right here. Slash V and then brackets, then a number. What that does is it prints out the value of that variable in your text. So slash V bracket 12 prints out the value of variable 12. And earlier, we just set the value of variable 12 by typing it in. So cool. That is how you rename your rival. Yeah, hopefully this video helped you out. It's, um, it's kind of some obscure stuff, but it's also some important stuff. I mean, yeah, rivals, rivals are very important to Pokemon games. So yeah, hopefully this video helped you out. Now you can make rivals that have teams that are different based on the starter you've chosen. You can make rivals that grow with you and use the same rival sprite, but get stronger and stronger throughout the game. And now you know how to rename your rival. So yeah, you can use what you've learned on lots of other trainers if you choose. You can make multiple rivals if you want. You know, just make sure that you go to your scripts and make it so that way they don't all use the same name. So that way there's like 12 and then 13, 14 if you want to have different variables for different rivals names if you want to type them all in. But yeah, once again, hopefully this video helped you out. I hope you liked it and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to follow on Twitch and Twitter, you know, join... Oh, and, and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Uh, you know, join the Thundaga Discord and all that, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys next time, where I'm going to talk about a pretty cool topic. I'm going to talk about Wonder Trade. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.